The Children's Home Society of Florida strives to set all children up for success. While the organization's initial goal is to bring children back home safely, in some situations, this is not possible. In these cases, CHS works diligently to find the right family for all children seeking adoption. Here to talk about potential challenges facing adoption programs and what can be done to help is CHS Adoption Program Manager, Yolanda DeMont, and Program Director of Operations, Jennifer Patterson. Well, thank you so much for being here. How about you both tell us about yourself and about the program and what the program does? Well, thanks for having us. We're, we're very glad to be here. Um, I'm Jennifer Patterson. Um, I'm the Director of Program Operations for Children's Home Society. We I have worked for Children's Home Society for about 14 years now, and I work um, with children who are in um, the foster care system and, and with Yolanda and the, the foster to adopt system. And I'm Yolanda de Mon. I'm the Adoption Program Manager for CHA, and I'm very excited to be with you. Thank you. And I have been with CHS for 18 years. Um, I would say the majority doing adoptions for the agency and you know helping to find homes for you know for the kids. Okay. Well, this is Adoption Awareness Month, it is. and you both told me that we were talking about the different types of adoption. So, what are the two types of adoption, and which one does you, your organization do? So um, we do foster care adoption. So it's two types. It's, it's like what normally people know in the community, like a private adoption. Um, in those cases, is when the child is um, given by the birth parents to a family. Um, it's like a mutual agreement that they can like present in court and do the adoption. Um, CHS work it with foster kids. So basically, it's kids who have been removed from um, abuse situations and they're not able to be reunified with the birth family. So after um, trying to um, rebuild that family or like, you know, like bring that child back to the birth parents and it's not possible, then we identify homes for that child in order to have permanent family moving forward. Okay. One of the barriers I could think of that people may have in adoption is that maybe they can't afford to adopt a kid. But as you explained, there's two types. So, what would be best for that person who wants to adopt, but they don't have like all this money to put down on a private, on adoption. A private adoption? Well, one of the things that, that benefits, I think, are our, our parents who have gone through the home study process to be adoptive parents. Um, the state of Florida does support them financially um, with some of the costs of things like legal fees and, and filing um, the proper documents with court in order to make those adoptions successful. So you're not, as if you're approved, you're not spending a lot of money on the private adoption side. There's there's fees to adopting. There are, um, but it, it's with the state of Florida, they re, they basically cover the cost of it mm -hmm. um, through um, the lead agency and with Embrace for our approved families. They they do cover the cost of any legal fees um, in order to, to finalize the adoption. Okay, and what financial stability is required of the family or the parent to adopt? Um, they just have to be able to, to basically meet their own financial needs. I mean, we know that when you accept a child into your home, there's going to be a slight cost of, of living increase. But for the most part, um, the families just have to be financially stable. Um, they don't have to have a lot of money. They don't have to make a lot of money in order to provide a home for a child. Yeah. I mean, children, they could range in price, right? Raising yes. kids. I mean, we have kids, you know, how expensive they could be. Yes. Um, I guess if you say no more often, that they're a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But they, I mean, the, the other benefit too of, of adopting through foster care is um, we the insurance is still provided through the state. So if they're on Medicaid, they can continue with Medicaid. Um, Yolanda, I don't know if you want to yeah. add the other supportive services. Yeah, like our kids are like what they call special need children. So 99% of the kids, um, they have like some um, need for service. And, and that's the beauty of the foster care adoption. The state in, give incentives to the adoptive parents to like be able to, you know, to parent the child. So they have benefits. They have like a, a maintenance, like a financial monthly assistant, you know, to afford those extra expenses of the child. And they also, um, they like cover the Medicaid. So basically for foster care, a family doesn't need to like take nothing out of their packet for, to be approved or go through the process. Of course, it's gonna highlight like the normal, like, you know, expenses of raising a child. 
but whatever is like extra because of special needs of a child is um, the state will help and assist with that. Okay, so besides the normal, you know, the kid wants an Xbox or right. whatever, you know, of course that's up to the parent to pay for, but if there's any medical expenses because of some condition that the child may have, that's covered by the state? Yes, yes that's oh, correct. Wow. Yes. That's very interesting to know. Yeah. I had no idea. So and there's we, no barrier to adopting a child who may be differently abled or have some some medical conditions. No, nope. our, our, our families just need to be willing to open their homes mm -hmm. and, and maybe open their minds a little bit to, to ado adoption because it's the children that we have available within our system are their, their older children. They're usually they between eight and 17. And a lot of them are part of, you know, a, a sibling group of like two or three, and they don't necessarily want to be separated. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it could be just, you know, opening your mind of, okay, well, I would like to adopt a child, but oh, this one, you know, has a, has a brother. So being open to, you know, that sibling connection and keeping those children, you know, together. Cause you know, when they enter foster care, it's a very traumatic experience for them. And so we, we are very focused and dedicated to making sure that our siblings are always are placed together. And if they, they become available for adoption, that they, they get matched with a home forever family together. Okay. So I think it's really important for people out there to know because they may not know that there's, first of all, the two types of adoptions. Because um, right. I know I've heard some stories where someone has adopted and then they have a child who they didn't know had some some issues from the, the parents. You know, maybe they were alcoholics or drugs that then passed on some medical conditions to a child. And then they had to spend all these money, all this money on the medical expenses. But now that I know that's probably because it was a private adoption at birth, you know, and so that was all on them to pay that. But you have, like you were saying, older children that you're mm -hmm. adopting that, well, you're already going to know what the conditions are, what the challenges are going to be raising the child. Um, and we were also talking about the, um, the trial period or dating period of you know, getting to know this child and that you match them. Talk about the match. Let's talk about the matching. How do you match? Well, I, you know, one of the things I think that we and, and Yolanda does and her team do a great job of is, is matching um, families to the needs of the children. Because a lot of times, you know, I think what we do at CHS is try to make sure that if, you know, we know a child is becoming available for adoption, you know, her team learns everything they can about that child and, and searches for a family that can actually, you know, kind of make that connection and fit the puzzle pieces together. So what that child needs, that family is, you know, connecting into and making sure that they're meeting that child's needs. Um, and so there is a full disclosure process that, you know, Yolanda is, is can go into, um, um, because she is actually the subject matter expert um, in that field. But, you know, it, it, there is a lot, and I don't want to say science that goes into it, but Yolanda's 20 years of experience um, definitely, you know, make uh, most of our adoptions successful, um, which like last year we had um, 98 adoptions just in Orange County um, for her team. So in a COVID, in a pandemic, when court systems were shut down, um, she actually found a way to keep, you know, permanency happening and making sure that our families um, and our children, you know, get the finalization done. So I don't know if you want to explain your full yeah. disclosure process because it is definitely a process. So what is the full disclosure? The, the full disclosure is, is, a, is a requirement by the state when you're doing the adoption where any information in the background or the birth family, like medical, social, um, legal, um, educational, um, so you can like be aware of the adoptive parents in regards to the child. So everything that we know, of, of course, they can be like uh, some um, factors that we don't have knowledge because maybe the father is on and on or the mother left the child in the hospital and there's no way like to locate her. Uh, but then we do like a deep search to try to, you know, like identify all the information and make it available to the adoptive family. So at least they had, you know, like all the pieces that they may need in the future if the child exceeds any needs so they can know like how to do it. Also during that full disclosure is staffing we, we try to um, uh, offer to the family and like learn they know like all the um, 
type of service they may need in regards to the child based on the history of the family they're not going to need in the future like therapeutic service medical service educational service so that way the family is more prepared to bring the child into their home and be able to you know like receive all those referrals and all those services to start working to the child to you know to be successful and then i guess another fear kind of related to this too is that oh if i adopt a child then they're going to want to go find their birth parents and leave us or something like that again i think that's more private adoption right rather than actually no, no. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so it can happen in both right. situations it can yes. happen in both and mm -hmm. I mean even on the occasions where we do have uh, you know maybe a baby that is adopted or a toddler um, you know they can go back you know years later when they become teenagers and and want to know about their birth family so we always encourage our adoptive parents um, to be open to that you know to not um, keep it secret that they're adopted mm -hmm. um, and to and to be open to their questions and we even offer counseling like even if it's future if you adopted a five-year-old and then you know they turn 15 and they're asking questions you know it, they can always come back and say you know, hey can I get some help with processing this maybe some counseling because you know I'm feeling you know I'm uncomfortable with this I'm worried that I'm going to you know lose my child to the birth family but most of the time for kids it's just about um, understanding and and maybe processing that because for a child that is adopted from the system you know they they know that they they're usually older and they know that their parent was there and they know that they're no longer with their parent um, a lot of times and so they may not under, have understood it at the time but later you know as they get older they're trying to so it, it we always encourage them to be open and honest with them and help them process through it because the more connected they stay with their child through that process obviously the more trust and and you know and is built to be honest because if they're staying with them through that and they're helping them navigate those feelings and and what they're going through then it it, it actually helps them in the long run but we always encourage our families to be open about that even if they're adopting at a young age um, because it, it will come up it will it will always come up Okay. And it's resources that we can offer. Like the department um, has some resources when the child turns 18. To, um, they have like a, an agency, they call it Adoption Reunion Register, where um, they, the child can also like connect with them and they, uh, they help them to like search. Um, because the department has records of the child when he was going through the termination of parental rights process. So, so we also have like resources to help the child to connect. Okay, so if the child reaches a certain age, they could register themselves so that if the parents yes. looking for them, yes, yeah. they could find them. Yes, the department yeah. has on. You know, they have like an, an agency to help them to, you know, like to reconnect with the birth family. And during our training and preparation for adoptive family, like Jennifer mentioned, uh, we, we, you know, we educate our uh, adoptive parents to know that at one point in life this is going to happen. So keep it open uh, because you're just basically making your child more, more successful and emotionally stable. So it's not like a surprise for them. And then they, at one point, they may want to know the identity, so that way they, you know, like um, they can connect and, and, and try to find those bare parts. What's that period like when you're trying to match someone? They got matched, and there's that yes. that period you're trying to get them to adapt to that new family. We call it like uh, pre visits, like a replacement visits. I'm sorry. So it's uh, basically it's like um, we identify some families, and then we do a review and. It's not like one family is better than the other one or perfect, you know, and like, it's just like what my, you know, the strengths of the family is much better the strengths of the child. So we choose the family, we invite them for like a full disclosure, like a file review, so that way they can get to know all the information and the family can also say, you know, this is my best match. Um, and then they agree, they want to meet the child. So um, we start with short visits, like I like day visits. I always, you know, like joke with our adoptive families and say, you're dating your child, so, but you had to show your real self, you know, like, you, you know, show yourself. So that way, you know, the child fall in love with you, know what you are bringing to the child. Like. And so they start like some visits during the day. They may go to a park, they may go to a movie when they can do it. They may, you know, like go for like a like dinner. And then we start increasing those visits. Uh, that period can take from like I would say like three to four weeks to maybe like uh, another like three or more. So basically it's like kind of six, six or eight weeks of visitation yeah. and then we discuss placement. So the child get placed in your child officially, the core grant custody for you to have a child temp, you know like placed in your home and you have at least 90 days of placement before you can agree with the adoption in court. 
So that's, that's the regulations in the state of Florida. So the states do it different, but here your child needs to be at least for three months in the home. And a social worker has to like visit home at least once a month to, you know, um, discuss with the family how they're feeling, how's their judgment. And if it, after 90 days, they feel comfortable and ready to, you know, do it, then they do the court hearing and finalize the adoption and become officially your child, like if it was born to you. And what if it doesn't work out in that period of time? They had the, the, so, the social workers, you know, we have our, our team who always try to uh, identify stress, stressors or, or need for service. So we always try to offer the family all the service and the stabilization. But those 90 days also help to um, to know if the child adjusts well or not. So we can, um, if that's the case, we do a transition to, you know, move the child back in foster care. So that way the adoption doesn't proceed. Right. And then there is a, a process of if someone was already fostering, that they can move to adoption? Yes. yes. Because we we do foster care adoptions, um, the children are already either placed in foster care or with a relative, non-relative. Um, and so a lot of our foster parents do end up adopting um, if, if the goal changes to adoption. So um, I would probably say, I'd, how many... I mean, most of our adoptions Majority. are relative, non-relative, but I would probably say 50% of our adoptions in Orange County are um, foster parents who end up adopting. Or relatives. And, right. Or relatives, relatives. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a good possibility, but, um, you know, our foster parents are also um, usually uh, families that adopt multiple times as well. So, um, you know, they, they make a commitment to a child and, and stick with it. So yeah. we're very fortunate. Yeah. For our fo to have our foster families, right? Because it's like when the child is removed from the birth family, and it's this um, time they were, you know, trying to unify back. So we always identify foster parents or relatives or non-relatives can be a church member, anybody like close to the family who say, "I'm going to take care of the child temporarily until the parents do better." If they are not able to be unified, then they keep it, and then they fall in love with the child. They're not going to let it go, so they want to adopt it. But sometimes we have some of those caregivers who say from the beginning that we just want to do it temporarily. Um, we, they were trying to support their family. So in those cases, we identify like the adoptive home and then we do it. So, but yes, it's true. A lot of our foster parents become adoptive parents and they... Okay. So another question is what about if they already have, if the person wants to adopt already has kids, how does that work bringing in a new child and the adapting with each other how yeah. I'm just curious how how that is, family dynamic works and how do they judge? Is it is it harder or is it easier? Or? Sometimes it's easy. Yeah, sometimes it's very easy. easy. Um, and I think it's honestly individualized to the family. Um, and a lot of our families that are adopting, um, you, the children know, uh, unless they're very young. I mean, they're part of that home study process. They're part of the assessment of it. They're part of those visits that Yolanda talked about. When they're dating the child, it's the whole family. It's not just the mom or the dad, but if they have three other children in their home, the family comes together collectively, and it's part of that process of getting to know one another. Um, and so it can, it, a lot of times, you, you, you know, we try to anticipate very, or issues that might come up. But most of the time, I mean, th the siblings are some of the most, you know, open and inviting uh, to, you know, their new sibling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's kind of, you know, it gives you like a good feeling because they're just, you know, here's my toys, here's my things, you know, here's my room you can share with me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it, you know, it just kind of, that's one of those things that fills your cup. Um, but it, it is individualized. And, and if there are issues down the road or, you know, because, you know, you can have, you you know, great, like five-year-olds, and then all of a sudden your kids are teenagers, um, and we know what happens <laughs> there. Um, you know, I think those, one of the great things about adopting from the foster care system is, is you know, we're, we're still there to support you. Even though your adoption may be finalized and it's five years later, you know, I think CHS is, is, is committed to working in the communities that we're, we serve in. Even though we're a statewide agency, you know, we are committed to Orange County and we have, you know, we have counseling services that we offer, we can offer families. We have mentoring services, we have tutoring, we have early childhood interventions. Um, and so we really try to, um, 
be that agency that is there before the crisis happens or before it becomes a crisis. So we try to make sure that we're we're covering all of the needs of our families. Um, but yeah, they're, the siblings are the best, I think. And yeah. in, in all of my experience, um, they're usually the ones that are supportive of their new sibling. And many of my successful adoptions is because the um, friends of the kids, like through school, they 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 go to the parents and say my best friend in the school is you know is losing his home or you know his parents go in trouble or you know like he doesn't have place where to go and many of those families contact you and say you know like I, you know my, my son is talking about his best friend in foster care I want him in my home so we place it and they and they when the future become the adopted parent. So I feel like those teams, yeah, those teams <laughs> yeah. open, you know, those kids have opened their homes, and in yeah. many, in many occasions, those those mm -hmm. kids are the ones telling the parents, "Mom, Daddy, can we have another sibling?" And the parents are like, "No, I don't, I don't know, I don't feel like having a baby <laughs> now." Like, no, I can't want a baby. I want somebody, you know, same age like me. So that's how they, they become and like your brother, your sister. <laughs> yes, yes, they do it like yeah, it's true. But it's yeah. true. Like sometimes it's rival rivally like every sibling, and sometimes it's also a, an education for the parents because sometimes people feel they they're fighting too much and, and and there's no good match, and we had to like intervene from the therapeutic part and say this is normal. You know, like yeah. you, you learn social skills oh, between yeah. siblings. <laughs> sometimes they fight because they love more. Like um, we just want, like Jennifer mentioned, we just bring service and help them like through therapy to learn to communicate more and, and to have like understanding where he's coming from, where she's coming from. But yeah, like I just feel that homes with kids, sometimes they can even like be able to overcome those challenges because they have also the support of their own kids. Mm -hmm. Any red flags that, you know, sorry, you're not going to work out an adoption, like, any disqualifications uh, for the adoptive parents mm -hmm. uh, yes like um it's clear in the statute um you cannot have like some um you cannot be convicted of some felonies like like Felony. violent okay. yeah like a, like a violent crimes um or like any like child abuse like you know like uh, those records they definitely won't allow you mm -hmm. to be an adoptive parent understandable yeah yes yeah. but but otherwise like I, I said before I'm you know one of the the greatest things is is that it can be any family so you don't have to be a certain socioeconomic status to be able to adopt um, you won't be turned away you know if you're you're not in the upper echelons of, of, of income um, because really it's more about finding you know a, a permanent home for for a child and so you know we we have people from every ethnicity every social class every everything that that have adopted and they've all most of them are successful and most of them have you know you impact one child and you've impacted you know his whole life so it's it's one of the best things i think is is adopting from foster care and the bond with the child, we, we, any caregiver who's willing to adopt, um, for us is the priority. So even if your family is having some financial difficulties or, or like, you know, this stable situation that they want it, if they really, you know, we want to maintain that connection, we will help the family too. You know, we may refer us for a job, we may refer us for, you know, housing, right? Mm -hmm. we, we offer some um, support to that, to that caregiver to be able to become the adoptive party, if that's the case. But yeah, some people just hit financial troubles unexpectedly yes. sometimes right so we, so we we work it out like we know we help especially if the child is already connected with it are you aware of the movie instant family yes yeah. it's my favorite and i recommend that movie to every adulting party when they start the training yes so there was this one parent who was like very specific in who she wanted to adopt and like if she wanted to have like the future football player oh. <laughs> so if someone's like well i want like a, a child has like um 4.5 GPA and and this and that um, that doesn't work out that way. Well, according it's a family. They were like, yeah, that's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> the, the movie is very yes. real, like in, in a lot of like areas. Like, of course, they feel like the you know like the funny part, but uh, it's very real. No, sometimes yes. families come because it's normal. Like when, when you wanna be a part of you, it's like you know you fantasize, and as a child you fantasize like what you want it. So families sometimes come, but I believe when they go through the training process. They, they learn they learn where their kids coming from and I guess when you start like parenting then you learn like um, they you, I want my child to be happy not necessarily like, you know what I mean like so they surprise you you know they surprise you you know what I mean so I, a lot of families were like um, you know I want the child to be successful in school and 
And sometimes we, we had a discussion with the parents and, and they learn through the process they okay, before he become that successful child in the school that you want it, um, there's a lot of healing, trauma that he has to overcome and the adoptive parent is the healer, right? So uh, one day you're gonna bring your child there, but it's not gonna be yet. Mm -hmm. um, or you're gonna learn other uh, like hobbies or interests that, that you know, the child has and then as a parent, you're gonna switch that mentality that you had before. So I guess it's like what I say, it's like a learning process for the two of them during the, you know, like the adoption. Yeah, that movie was excellent, yeah. I'll say. Like, it had me laughing and crying in multiple oh. places throughout the whole movie. It's like a roller coaster of emotions. Yes. Yeah. And, and I love the part when um, he took the child to destroy the, the house they were building. <laughs> yeah. Um, because sometimes our families uh, during like those difficult moments that you say it's not going to work out because they feel like the child is it's exhibiting some of those behaviors and it's gonna be like that forever. And, uh, and, we, and, we, and that's our educational and therapeutic work, is like, um, that's his way to express what he's feeling in that moment and he doesn't know any other way better. So like, let's figure it out, you know, with the, with the parents. Um, so that the movie was perfect, that, that part is perfect. And we presented to the families, it's like, you know, look, like she's just trying to take all those emotions out. So you just need to wait. Mm -hmm. You need to find a way how to help your child to like express it to you. So. Now they actually have rooms where you can go and destroy rooms. Right, like, yes. like escape rooms, but it's like rooms where they have all the stuff <laughs> the they do. The glass throwing yeah. Yeah. and then the axe throwing. Yes. yes. Very therapeutic. It is very yeah, therapeutic. I haven't done it, but I can imagine. Okay, well, thank you so much for being here. Is there anything else that you want to leave our viewers with? Anything that I didn't ask that they should know? No, I, I thank you for giving us this yes. forum and kind of explaining that because, um, you know, I don't think a lot of times you know, foster care is not an easy topic to, to talk about, and it can make people uncomfortable. But if you think of it in terms of, you know, foster care, and especially, you know, the children who are available for adoption, you know, are, are waiting out there for a home, and they, they don't need it to be perfect, and they don't need it to be a two-story with a picket fence. They just, they just need somebody that's willing to connect with them and to love them. So thank you for giving us that forum so people can, can be knowledgeable about it and, and understand it a little, a little bit more. And for the adoption awareness, like the National Adoption Month, is like I, they say take a village to raise a child. So I take take a village to adopt a child. So I, I feel that you, you don't need to become an adoptive parent in order to support adoptions. Like basically like the teacher who's teaching that child who, who is placed in an adoptive home, if it, she, like, she knows the story and she um, do a little bit more research and, and find ways to support the adoptive parent that will help because it's, it's like every part, you know, like, like the church, like the church community can support those adoptive parents when they're going through that. The lady in the store, when the child is throwing a tantrum, like, you know, like, it's nice when they come and say, I understand you, I was, you know, like, <laughs> don't worry, you know, like, when I was in training, people say that, like, when, when you see, like, things, like, the, the, in, in your eyes, are like, like, no, like, you know, this is awkward. Um, that family may be going through an adoption process. So I feel like everyone in the community, the neighbor, the church, the school, everybody support the adoptive family. They can, you know, overcome those, you know, that transition period better. Mm -hmm. And thank you for having us here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming and for explaining this very, I'll say, um, process that many people don't know about and may have a lot of questions like I did and may want to adopt. But I think there's a lot of barriers there, so. My goal is definitely to get them over those barriers by getting these questions they may have answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.